crystal blue waters, pure white sand, colourful coral reefs, incredible wildlife, a vibrant coastal town. Welcome to the Whitsundays, the ultimate cruising destination. I'm Sharon Smallwood. I'm a multimedia journalist. I run my own media company specialising in communications and PR. And I'm also, more importantly, an avid sailor. And that's what I'm here to talk about today is what's special about the Whitsundays and why you should come cruising here. Firstly, the Whitsundays has an abundance of anchorages to suit pretty much any weather and wind direction, which is quite unusual. They're also all within a reasonably short sailing distance of each other. Everything's within a short hop, skip and a jump of each other, which is really quite unique. There is literally something for everybody here. So whether you're into the high life and you want to go to an island resort, you can do that here. If you just want to get away from it all and go to a deserted beach, you can do that here. There's bushwalking, snorkeling, diving, you name it, there is something for everybody. Of course, the Whitsundays is iconic too. I think you'd be hard pressed to be anywhere around the world and not have heard of the place. So we are the physical and spiritual heart of the Great Barrier Reef. When I say that, I mean physically because we're sort of in the centre, north and south and spiritually because we have that icon of the actual heart reef, which for anybody who hasn't seen it, is shaped like a traditional love heart and it's one of our hero tourism images. Of course, that goes along with uh, famous Whitehaven Beach and, and Hill Inlet. And when you sail here, you get to see those. So if you're thinking of making your way up here from Southern States uh, for this season, or any season really, pick your weather and take your time. It can be a really pleasant trip if that's what you do and also make sure that you allow enough time when you're up here. And I would suggest an absolute minimum of two weeks, preferably a good couple of months is what you should be looking at to spend in the Whitsundays. There's a comprehensive list of anchorages that you can use both north and south of the Whitsundays on the route to and from. Um, they can be found in Alan Lucas's Cruising the Coral Coast, which is a, a guide that most people will have on board. Once you get to the Whitsundays, so the very bottom of the Cumberland Islands, the Keswick St. Bees, that's where uh, David Colfelt's 100 Magic Miles kicks in. And that is the quintessential guide to the Whitsundays. It, it's the boating bible for the area. So what are some of my favourite Whitsunday destinations and why? Well, as far as beaches go, I think it'd be hard, you'd be hard pushed to go past Whitehaven. It's not world famous for no reason. It is seven kilometres of pure white silica sand. And one of the most beautiful things about it is that for somewhere that's so popular, you can actually get a stretch of that sand to yourself. And of course, it's topped by that postcard perfect hill inlet you can anchor in Tongue Bay, do the walk. It's the postcard view that everybody sees, sends back home. It's, it's kind of one of the must do parts of the Whitsundays for good reason. Just across the water from Whitehaven Beach is Chalkies Beach, which might not be as well known as its more famous cousin, but is equally as beautiful. It's got the same white silica sand it's a sunset beach, so you can actually sit on that beach at sunset and watch the sun go down over Whitehaven, which is quite something. On the west side of the island, so a little bit closer to home, we've got the beautiful Langford Island and Spit and Reef. That is just an incredible place to witness the change of tide. So at high tide, the sand spit can virtually disappear and at low tide, you'll feel like you can walk along it for miles. And another place that I highly recommend for its beach and its natural scenery on this west side of the islands is Blue Pearl Bay. I think for me, that's one of my favorite anchorages in the Whitsundays. It's just, it's absolutely stunning. And it's actually one of the only places where you can see wallabies for every now and again. If you're keen on bushwalking, which I am, there's a great selection here. There's some amazing tracks, very well maintained by national parks. 
For beginners, um, I'd recommend the tracks on South Mole Island. Beyond that, and if you want to really challenge yourself physically, I would recommend Whitsunday Peak on Whitsunday Island. Another walk which is of that kind of uh, physical challenge and perhaps an even more spectacular view is the Cairn. It's a great climb and again when you get to the top it's absolutely epic. You've got an amazing granite boulder still towering above you but just views that you could be in an aeroplane looking at. So of course being on the Great Barrier Reef Everybody wants to go for a snorkel here. And I, for me, I think one of the best spots has to be Mount Array Bay. It's the place to go and swim with large fish like giant Mary Rass, giant Trevally, and also big schools of fusiliers. It's one of those bucket list experiences of the Whitsundays. Another place to snorkel, of course, is the Great Barrier Reef. So actually taking the opportunity to leave the islands behind, make that jump from the top of Hook Island over to Bait Reef. There's uh, the stepping stones out at Bait Reef, which make for some great snorkeling. Just having that wild experience of being surrounded by nothing but the big blue out there and actually being able to look at, look back on the Whitsunday Islands is quite, quite special. If you're planning to stay out of season, there are some pretty unique features that you won't find at another time of the year uh, and that includes waterfalls I mean we all like to go chasing waterfalls and Stonehaven is a great spot for that in the uh, southern of the little bays there you'll find a beautiful waterfall or series of waterfalls that you can just uh, hop up a few rocks to get to and indulge in some clear pools on a hot day um, also, Nara Inlet has a lovely waterfall at the head and again it's a clamber over some rocks up and, and sitting in a, a pool with a nice refreshing drink. It never ceases to amaze me that no matter how long I've lived here for and how often I go out, I can still manage to find places that I've never been to. And that's really saying something. There's just so much to explore out there. It's very difficult to get bored in a place like this. I would encourage anybody who hasn't been to the Whitsundays before to put it on your radar, if not bucket list. I would encourage you to either make the trek up here on your own boat if you can. It's an amazing experience and one that you likely won't regret. Um, or if that isn't for you or you don't have a boat, I would encourage you to come here and get out to the island some other way. You can, of course, bear boat charter, which means that you can hire the boat and skip it yourself. Or even if that's not for you, you can take a, a boat out that has a skipper. So there are plenty of ways to experience the, uh, the place. I think the main message is that you do.